Hello learner, welcome to the learning of computer networks and security. Let's continue with the module 3 concepts. We have already uh, completed the routing algorithms and then we moved on to routing in the internet. And now we will see the last topic of this module that is broadcasting and multicast routing. So here well, let's deal with the broadcast routing techniques. We'll just start with the broadcast routing here. So first of all, what is broadcasting? Broadcasting is send the packets to all. Something like you send to all. So here also in the networks, broadcasting is deliver the packets from source to all the other nodes in the network that is the meaning so how broadcasting can be done or how broadcast routing can be done so one of the simple technique is source duplication so what is source duplication a simple example you can just see here Router R1, suppose if it is a source, if it has to broadcast the packets to all the other routers in the network, the other routers are R2, R3 and R4. So how it can broadcast? Suppose if a R1 has a packet, if it has to send to R2, only one copy is enough. But, suppose, but since R1 also has to send the packet to R3, there must be one more copy of the packet. Again, it has to send to R4. So, one more copy is required, right? So, total, there must be three copies of the packets in order to send it to all the other routers in the network. So, what R1 should do? Create a duplicate copy. So, how many copies? Again, three copies of the packet should be created. So, then that particular three copies can be circulated or it can be broadcasted to all the routers in the network. Right? So, here um, that is one of the idea. But is it practically possible? If suppose a network is a very big network and where you have thousands of millions of uh, routers, so a particular source when it is sending, can it create a million copies of packets and broadcast? So practically it is impossible, right? So we can have one more technique there. So what is that one more technique? A source router who has to send the packet, suppose R1 is a source, it will send, it, it will just have one copy of the packet, right? So that copy of the packet will be sent only to its neighbor. So who is the neighbor of R1? R2 is the neighbor. So R2 will get one copy of the packet. So source has sent only to its neighbor, right? So one copy. Now what R2 should do? R2 knows that R3 and R4 are two neighbors. So what R2 should do? For its two neighbors, R2 has to create two copies of packets. And this duplicates are created here at R2, not at R1. Remember, R2 is creating two copies, duplicate copies. And those two copies are circulated to then R3 and R4. So suppose what happens here, once R4 reaches here, gets the packet here, packet reaches R4. R4, for R4, who are the neighbors r3 is a neighbor and also r2 is a neighbor right so here what r4 will do definitely it will also create two packets and one will be sent to r3 and one more will be again sent back to r2 so is it not a drawback here yes, yes. so here it is something like you know a duplication uh, uh, problem is avoided like multiple duplicate copies at r1 you need not create but here there are chances of what the router sending again multiple duplicate copies to its neighbors so uh, uh, that is happening only when it has multiple neighbors or when a uh, node has multiple neighbors right so here uh, that is the drawback so uh, we'll just see the next thing So we have just seen here the flooding technique. So what is flooding technique? Flooding means a node receives the broadcast packet, broadcast packet and sends copy to all its neighbors. So that is what we had seen, flooding, right? So what is the problem with that? 
a graph if it has cycles so what is the meaning of cycle in the graph uh, it's like a closed loop right so suppose here uh, i had a network something like this I had four nodes in my network in my previous and I also had a cycle there, right? So this is node 1, this is node 2 and this is node 3 and then this is node, node the fourth node. So here uh, you can just see here, this is third node, you can just see here there is a cycle, right? So, so because of the cycle what was happening, um, multiple packets were reaching again and again, multiple duplicate packets were reaching. So two created two copies, node 2 created two copies, one copy to three, one copy to four, again four when it gets the packet it will create a uh, duplicate of that and then again it will send two to three right so here at three one packet is from two what it is arriving and again one more packet same packet is arriving from four so why this is happening because of the cycle over here so the cycle should be avoided so what can we do for that so we can go for un uh, sorry controlled flooding so you call this entire concept as uncontrolled flooding right so uncontrolled flooding so how do you control flooding here? So control flooding is node only broadcast packet, only broadcast packet if it has not broadcasted packet, same packet before. So what is that? Here pa packet 3, at packet 3 it should be able to, one thing is it should be able to identify the duplicate packets arriving. So it should accept only one copy of the packet. When the other duplicate packet is arriving, the uh, node 3 should discard that duplicate packet. So what is that uh, uh, solution you can give here? Definitely. So we have a sequence number as a solution. So what is the sequence number that you can assign? So the packet that, that you're sending for, for that, the sequence number if you're assigning so who has to assign node 2 when, when it is sending a duplicate packet so, so here one sequence number should be added uh, so again here for this packet also sequence number should be added so that sequence number packet when it reaches 3 and again when that sequence number packet reaches 4 both the nodes 3 and 4 should make an entry of that packet inside its routing table so what is that it in, entry is, it is doing it is the sequence number what it has received that information it will uh, uh, record in its forwarding table and now what happens next again when pack, uh, when node 4 sends the same packet definitely this node 4 also will get the, the same sequence number so when that packet is a duplicate packet when it arrives node 3 node 3 with the help of its sequence number it will just check the duplicate packet right, right? so node 3 will compare this incoming packet with the already recorded sequence number se sequence number both the sequence numbers are compared so if it is same so node 3 has to discard that particular packet so here sequence number is one of the solution that you can give and one more solution what you can give is um, you can call it as reverse path forwarding so what is this first solution is done this is first solution second solution is reverse path forwarding so what is reverse path forwarding see when the node 3 is getting the packet from uh, node 4 it's a duplicate packet right so here what node 3 can do it can just calculate shortest path so what is the meaning of shortest path see here node for node 3 uh, what is the shortest path to reach node 1 definitely for node 3 the shortest path to reach the source node, node 1 is via 2 Again, for node 4, the shortest path to reach node 1 is what? Via 2. So, again, for node 2 to, to reach node 1, which is the shortest path, definitely it's a direct path, node 2 to node 1. Now, here, whenever a packet arrives at any node, shortest path is calculated back to its source. See, so let's start from the beginning. When node 1 sends a packet to node 2, node 2 will calculate the shortest path from itself back to the source so is that the shortest path definitely yes yes and that is the only path so if it is getting the packet through the shortest path then definitely the node 2 will accept packet so here packet is accepted next packet 2 will again create a duplicate of uh, that particular packet receive packet and that duplicate is sending to 3 and one more copy is sending to 4 so what 3 will do upon receiving it will calculate the shortest path so calculating the shortest path again back to source node 1 so 3 to reach 1 it has to take the path via node 2 so this is the only shortest path so definitely node 3 will compare that shortest path with one more path this is one more path right so 3 can reach source node y 1 via node 4 so this is also one path but compare these two paths which is shortest definitely this is a 
shortest path via uh, next hop router to so here what uh, node 3 will do it will definitely accept the packet only from node 2 not from node 4 so here when node 4 tries to send the packet to 3 3 will again calculate the shortest path definitely for 3 shortest path to reach the source node 1 is via 2 not via 4 so it is uh, 3 when it will uh, node 3 when it comes to know that packet 4, uh, sorry no 4 is sending the packet so as per its shortest path calculation it should not accept the packet from node 4 so this you call it as reverse path, reverse path for forwarding so, so this technique can also be used to control the flooding so there can be one, one more solution to control this that is spanning tree so what is spanning tree it will just avoid the redundant packets it's redundant or duplicate packets it's arriving at any node so how it will uh, uh, reduce that so we will just see the spanning tree first As you all know, the spanning tree. What is the meaning of spanning tree? The tree without any cycles. That's the first and foremost point about spanning tree. That is, the tree should not have any cycles, right? And then, no cycles. And then, one more is, uh, it should be something like the cost. The cost sh should find out. So the tree should have the minimum cost minimum cost to reach the nodes so there can be multiple spanning trees for any graph given for any network degree given you can create multiple spanning trees but out of those multiple pan spanning trees again uh, you know uh, multiple spanning trees in the sense the multiple trees without cycles right a cyclic graph so those among those multiple trees you compare the cost there so whichever tree has the least minimum cost there to all the nodes that tree will become the minimum spanning tree minimum spanning tree means the cost to reach from one node to all the other nodes is small plus the graph should be acyclic so that these two points you remember now what we are going to do just to have a tree first you just see here only these thick lines are nothing but the path okay that is nothing but the uh, spanning tree that we have created for this initial graph so what is our initial graph can you see there is a link from A to C. This is a link. Then again, we had a link. We have a link from A to B. Also, we have a link from B to C. This is initial graph. Again, C to F we have. C to E we have. E to F also we have. Again, E to D also we have. And then finally, D to C we have. So, can you see cycles over here? Definitely, yes. Cycle 1, we can see cycle 2. And then we can see cycle 3. Three cycles. So, we have to break the cycle. So, create a spanning tree. So, spanning tree is like 1. A to B we have a link so, so this link is broken again C to F thick lines only you know, notice C to F and C to E and then B to E D and then D to G so can you see any cycles over here only the thick lines if you consider definitely no so you call this as a spanning tree now yes so here uh, again uh, you can just see whether now the broadcasting can be done yes so when node A has to initiate the broadcasting it will first send the packet to C and B and then C will send the packet to F and E and then B also can send the packet to D D also can send the packet to G so all the nodes in the graph must be there in spanning tree in spanning tree one important point you have to remember is construct the spanning tree in such a way that all the nodes which was there in the original network those nodes should be present in the spanning tree so here whether the uh, packets are broadcast to all the nodes in the network definitely all the packets all the nodes are receiving the packets similarly here in this spanning tree there is the same spanning tree shown over here but the source node is this node d can node d send the packet broadcast the packet to all the nodes so node d can send to g d also can send to b b thereon can send to a a can send the packet to C, C then finally can send the packet to F and E. So here this way also you can broadcast, uh, I mean broadcasting can, can be initiated by any node in the net network here in the, the spanning tree. So next uh, the challenge is how to construct a spanning tree. There are actually multiple methods to construct spanning tree. The first method to construct spanning tree is center node. 
so what is the center node we will just see here each node here sends unicast join messages to center node so here in the initial network we have to choose one node any one node as the center node so once that center node is chosen all the other nodes in the network will start sending a join message something like can i join your team so finally ultimately what what we are required there is a spanning tree that has to be created okay so spanning tree means what what the graph which should not have any cycles plus all the nodes in the original network should be present in that spanning tree right so that is actually the concept so message is forwarded until it arrives at a node already belonging to the spanning tree the meaning is here the unicast join message or once the node sends unicast join message to the center node uh, it, so it, it is something like all the nodes here will start sending the message and this message is forwarded until uh, it arrives until all the nodes in the original network are done right so until you reach a node which is already uh, which is already joined the uh, particular spanning tree something like that so we can just see in this example stepwise construction of spanning tree we'll just see over here so first you have to know which node should be selected as center node so here in this example let's choose this node e as center node so first we will see which node here sends a unicast join message so first node f has sent the unicast join message to see this so whether uh, f is accepted yes so e can accept here node f yes so remember how node e will accept it will it should ensure that it should make sure that before accepting this node one who is joining will not create any cycle in the network so definitely my right now my tree is empty i have only one node in the tree that is node e and now node f is trying to join so definitely its link is should be accepted why because there is no cycle at all because of f so there is a link created so there are now two nodes in my tree so yes so next uh, which node will send the join message we'll see see next uh, d can send the message next d can send the message so here whether i can uh, allow d definitely yes so d is added so right now my in my tree i have three nodes f e and d so again you can see here uh, uh, yes at the second step that is happening so you can just see now in the third step sorry second step there is one more thing happening what is that node b so node b also wants to join here right so node b wants to join so what it is doing now node b can send the message to d only so d is a neighbor of b right so that is how it can create a link to d and finally that unicast joining message will reach finally e because finally e only should approve that approve uh, the, the joining of uh, node b so b there on d and from there uh, d it will reach to e so will there be any cycle till here definitely no cycle so i have now four nodes in my network so next step is node a wants to join so definitely how it will join so first it will pass the unicast message to b then b to d and finally it will reach to a so e will finally ensure that there is no cycle created because of this a so so a is also done next uh, c is remaining so what c can do c can directly send the request to e so c's request is directly accepted by e so there is a link here created why it is created because there is no cycle at all created in the network so finally i'm sorry in my tree i have seven nodes and links are created here among all the nodes and definitely there is no cycle yes there is one more node left out that is node g which wants to join so how it can send it will send the request first to d and through d it will reach finally the request to e so there is a link that it can create from g to d and then anyways d to e we have right so this is how the uh, acyclic graph for spanning tree is constructed through center node so problem is here which node should be chosen as a center node so that selection is one of the uh, problem over here